So Celesta is basically a platform that helps um, organizations raise funding through um, NFT sales, <coughs> excuse me, and also then help organize contributors and just manage workflows and what folks are working on and things like that. So just running you guys through literally what somebody would be seeing as they log in, just so that when this is posted somewhere, it makes complete sense for people. So from the homepage, you can log in, clicking the alpha login button, that should pop up MetaMask. And you can log in, just sign to log in. And from there, what you'll be seeing is a whole page containing all of the projects that you're a part of. You're gonna see a whole bunch of them for me. Um, you folks should probably see two or three of them, maybe Lala Gardens and then Region Garden. And I'm gonna go to region or I'll use my demo one. So when you're a DAO lead, you can see both the dashboard home and the crowdfunding home. When you click on dashboard, <coughs> excuse me, you're gonna see a couple of different things on this panel here. So announcements, milestones that the organization is going towards, open quests, a couple of links just for like bookmarks and then circles or clusters representing who is contributing towards what efforts in the organization. The thing that we're basically using the most in Region Gardens, at least, is um, the notion of quests. So you can click on the open quest to go to a list of all the quests that are open. Clicking on the sidebar, which is always here, you just click here. You can look at the different categories and tabs. So under quests, you can view it as a list or a Kanban. Kanban is a bit nicer to look at. So here you can see um, each quest is either a drafted quest, open quest, someone's working on it, it's in progress, waiting for review, verified, or it's been rewarded. You can drag and drop them wherever, depending on if you're working on it or not. Clicking on them takes you into this larger panel view of the quest. You can see who's applied to take it on or work on it. Comments can be added here also. Explanation about the quest and what circle or cluster it's a part of. So this could be you no know, technology or marketing or something like that. Um, what reward people receive in exchange for performing the task and up and down vote functionality. This is mostly for when a quest is in draft mode and you want to figure out what to prioritize. People can go in and click on the ones that they think are the most valuable or the most important for the organization. Um, a couple more functionalities here. People can apply to a quest just by typing in a quick application message a link description and the link itself if there's some work attached like a google doc or something like that and as a lead you can go ahead and reward people so you can, let me find one with multiple folks here so when you reward people you can either assign a reward to a single person entirely or you can look at whoever is applied to a quest and you can have you know, send them fractions of the total reward amount. So if it's five, you know, each person can get two and a half or something like that. So if you have multiple people working together on a cost. Um, that's the base functionality that we're using for region. I can also pop into the people tab, which shows you all of the people in your, in your organization, as well as the clusters, which is what I talked to you about earlier, about just those categories of working groups, so to speak. Um, I'm going to pause here because I just dumped a whole bunch out, but I can go through, you know, how you create them, how you can dig in deeper as an applicant and so on. But does that, is the high level pretty, any questions here? Yeah, I like the high level because as you know, <laughs> there's an uh, in the real life kind of coordination with my specific, with Lala Gardens, and then there's mm -hmm. also the NFT community. So I'm interested in the clusters because I feel like even within the NFT environment, um, all the different functions that people are sort of onboarding can mm -hmm. be organized um, through the cluster as yeah. things, it seems like. For sure. And how that would go. So I'm going to go back to the home. You can click on this top thing here just to go back to the home base. And when you click on here and under DAO, go to clusters. Here you can create clusters on the side. And so enter the cluster name, parent cluster, just um, it lets you add some hierarchies if you'd like. So for example, you might have, um, oops, type messages. Um, for example, if you have you know an outreach mega cluster, you might have marketing is one, brand is the other or something like that. Maybe other way around, maybe brand goes into you know, marketing and outreach and so on. So if you wanted to have different um, hierarchies going on there, Pick description, you can pick a color for the tag itself, so it'll show up like that, or you can make 
you know, pick your own custom colors. Um, Excellent description, you can add the people who are going to be leads for the cluster, who's going to be just members, and whether or not it's open for applications. So after that point, when you hit on create clusters, I'm not going to create a cluster now, you get to see it like this. If you have like a hierarchy setting there, so here we have community as a part of the brand cluster, and so you can see it as a subcluster also if you choose to do that. Um, and if you're interested in applying to the cluster, so I showed you like if it's open or not to applicants. If you're in, if you want other people to be able to apply to them directly, they can click on here, and it looks very much like applying to a class. So they just enter you know a resume or just information about them and why they should be a part of that cluster, hit submit, and it'll show up um, show up there for you when you click on applicants. So you can see everyone who's applied to every cluster. Can there be sort of an onboarding questionnaire within that um, application process, or is it like more of a presentation? <clears throat> yeah, good point. Um, so it depends on the kind of onboarding that you're looking for. So right now, there's no formal way to put that in there apart from attaching a link in the description itself. So what that would be like is that you can input just, if you're interested in joining this cluster, here, fill in this questionnaire and it would be an external link. It's not sourced with anything. Um, that's for the cluster level. Okay. And what we do have as the, let me go to, as a whole DAO level or organization level, we do have a series of three welcome pages that you can modify. And so this would have a quick introduction about the organization, video or, um, or just an image even, just intro to, to what you're up to, and then a longer form story. When you hit next, it prompts folks. I think you've actually gone through this, Tina, but when you hit next, it prompts folks for basic information about them and the skills that they have. And from there, oops, uh, so. from there, it's just uh, how to get started. So you can type whatever you want here with what the next steps are, what folks should be working on. You can embed images and so on here too. So if you have any diagrams or anything to put in. And after that, when they hit let's go, it'll open up to the rest of the the rest of the workflow here. I'm actually considering redoing this so that it just shows people clusters and milestones and maybe announcements if folks are using that, but hopefully it'll reduce some clutter and make it easier for people to get oriented. So nice. And then how about um, because there's gonna be levels of uh, tokens, including a lot of um, mm -hmm. participation that lead into other kinds of tokens and then cross platform yeah. tokens and stuff like that. How, how can you, can you give us a window on what that of course. organization looks like? Yeah, for sure thing. So right now, how we handle tokens in here. So click again on that tab from before and go down to tokens under DAO, oops, tokens under DAO. And here, what you'll see is an interface for if you already have tokens that are created and they're just meant to be imported, uh, ERC 20s only, you can go ahead, click on import, enter the token address, what you want the token name to be. It can either be the actual name or something internally, you know, good for record keeping and what network it's on. So we support a couple of different networks right now. Um, hit submit. And after you hit submit here, it'll populate as one of um, the options for default tokens that you can select uh, as part of the DAO. And if you don't have any tokens, this is an older form, <laughs> it's not quite as pretty looking, but you can create a token here. We only use test net token, we've only created text -test tokens through this, but you can input, you know, the token name, symbol, and so on. Um, I would just leave the defaults here um, without any other information. So just type in, you know, governor, 100, 100,000. When you click create token, again, it'll be populated here as part of this um, list. And how you can use these tokens is in the form of going to a go to quests again. So when you go to quests and try to create a new quest, which I didn't show you how to do, so you can add a quest here and click on add a quest. And you can select uh, which token you want to use for rewarding people and the reward amount. Another place where this token is propagated is with direct compensation. So we have a notion of kind of like just payroll where you have everyone here, you can just type in, you know, how much money their or tokens you'll be receiving. And even here you can select the different um, tokens, but you have to be on the right network. So I think both of those were on Polygon, uh, which is why it doesn't show up here. I can change. 
Yeah, it's okay. It'll take a bit of time. So depending on what network you're on, the tokens that are available to use on that network are going to show up here. So for example, I had the two tokens I showed in that token tab, which I'll go back to. Both of these are actually going to be on Mumbai, I believe. Yeah, so Polygon. Um, whereas I'm on the Rink B network right now, which is why they didn't show up. So if I were to switch to Mumbai, they would have showed up. So those are two places to use them. Uh, I don't know if that's sufficient for you. Um, the other, this isn't tied to a token per se, but there's this allocation tab here that's really just used for bookkeeping. It's not tied to the rest of the platform, but how it works is that you can input your different token allocations, like how you envision for your organization's token, a single one, how you envision dividing it across different, I guess, stakeholders in your organization and how that's evolving over time. So if you input it into how it works is that you input users or one at a time or in a CSV is like a mass dump with their name, what their role is, over what time period they're receiving tokens from when they're starting to receive tokens and how many they receive. After you input this information about them, all of these graphs and, and stuff are populated about, you know, how are your tokens being released over time? How can I view, you know, at a specific time point who has how many tokens and so on. But this is independent from the rest of the platform. It's more for bookkeeping. I think Dan is the one who's been organizing and working with this interface here, but that's also down below. Really nice. So that that um, actually the, the current the fiat option would mm -hmm. that be an interesting way to track um, like money contributions and people who are investing? Mm -hmm actual dollars to be able to kind of weave them into the into the governance system does that make sense interesting so basically people who are contributing real dollars like some yeah. way of tracking so yeah. there's a couple of different ways to go about that oops sorry one question i have for you actually is the envision i'm guessing that that would be liquid assets, you know, it's fiat that it's used to fund day-to-day -day operations, so it wouldn't be converted to something like USDC or something like that, correct? Can I just clarify one, one that I think uh, to uh, follow up on what Tita's asking, mm -hmm. possibly, is that we're forming a cooperative, mm -hmm. so it's going to have like two different kinds of cooperative owners, a hundred dollar a share owners that are supporters and a thousand dollars, I mean, these are like ideas, but a thousand dollar shares for like stewards who are going to be more of like uh, people mm -hmm. who are contributing on a regular basis. Then we're also going to have people who are lending, crowd lending. So they're going to also be contributing uh, short-term lo um, loans at varying levels of mm -hmm. interest. Mm -hmm. So all of this needs to be accommodated. We're just wondering if any of that can be accommodated on a platform like this. Yeah, great question. So currently we don't have any ways of sending out or distributing funding to anything. Um, one moment. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so there's no way of interacting with fiat um, currency per se through the system. The only thing I can think of here is that they each of the in order for just bookkeeping to make sure that people are um, you're keeping track of what folks are doing and what's happening in those different circles, you can create clusters for each of them, and you can put individuals into the specific cluster based on what role they have in the ecosystem. Yeah, that, that, that works. At least it's something to track and... Um, yeah, I'm just curious if there's any other functionality that you envision. Like, so right now we don't have methods for basically transferring or holding on to any fiat or anything of that sort, but we do operate at kind of a higher level of helping you organize these people who are contributing in different ways. Um, if you wanted to speak a bit more building off of that regarding what, I guess, how the roles would be different and what styles of interaction modes you envision these different groups of people having to the organization, maybe it can have, we can brainstorm about what to bring into the system or how to evolve it also to better suit those needs. Well, I have a couple other questions. Um, one is, is there a way to design in so you can use this platform to create a token? Yes, you can. And is there a way to design that token so that it has a decay to it, that it expires or starts decaying after a certain period of time? 
No, not to, this is just a vanilla token. You create, you know, some fixed amount of them and you can send them out to different people. Yeah, okay. And then another question is, um, I don't know if you're aware of the Haifa platform, the Haifa DAO platform. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, what, is this a competitor? Is it a compliment? Like, I think um, I've taken a look at their current demo. I, I view it more as a compliment in that I think that Haifa kind of helps you I would say, how do I, so in my mind, Haifa plays a role of almost, I'm not sure if people are too familiar with platforms like Carta or things that help you kind of set, or I would say they help you organize you as an, like a formal organization entity um, mm -hmm. with respect to here's how you define payroll and different tiers of people receiving different you know, salaries and so on. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we're more focused on is helping you organize the nitty gritty day to day operations more smoothly. So things like what are folks working on? Um, is everyone organized on that front? What are the key milestones and objectives that the group is moving towards? So operating at a level slightly different from that architectural, like more foundational org chart level is what I view Haifa is working on. Uh, at least my current understanding of what they offer. If that's incorrect, then <laughs> happy to update. Yeah, and just to, just to ask, would this accommodate um, um, staff compensation using tokens, or would that be something you would use something else? Uh, so we can send out. So we don't have any way at the moment of doing scheduled compensation rollout. Like we could build that in, though, if it's of interest. But right now, the way we handle that is just by having folks type in per season how many rewards someone should be receiving. Mm -hmm. um, select the token that you want to send them out. Um, send out to them and you can reward directly using your wallet if you are an admin lead role and have all the tokens kind of in your wallet or rewarding via a NOSA safe address so we can input that too. Were you just on the call with um, Orgo? I was not. I thought I received a Cal invite for it but I realized I didn't actually see it on my calendar so I think I was it today. Yeah yeah I was just curious if you're familiar with what their platform is or tool. No, I'm not. I missed the call. But Tina, was it recorded earlier? It was. I saw the okay. record button. It, it I don't was, know if it was. was. It was recorded. I'll make sure it's available today. Okay, great. No, oh. I, it would, I can take a look at that and and let you know what my thoughts are on the comparison across the three platforms. Uh, and then do you by chance, are you in the Region Civics Discord? Uh, I'm on the Discord, yes. Yeah. The um, Because like, you know, there's this, there's Haifa, there's Orgo today, and then there's Nestor, and then there's um, a couple a couple more. And yeah. so I created a channel called, I'm not even sure this is the right, right channel, it's called Volunteer Coordination Platform. Mm -hmm. Does that seem what this is within that yes. uh, field? Yep. Yes. So, and I want people to actually start sharing their thoughts, ideas, both from the, the people who are actually developing the tools and from people who are piloting them. Mm -hmm. So we can all start to help collectively help make sense of all these things because it's, it's like, um, and cause we're all looking, we're all basically looking to evaluate the same thing and see how they all work together yeah. rather mm -hmm. than having all these things in silos and vacuums. <laughs> I just want to create a single thread in a group where 13 pilot projects are looking for what tools to use. Mm -hmm. So if you would, um, um, you know, what can view it as being awkward to contribute because you're one of the platforms, but I think it would be great if, Everyone could actually work together to help figure out how these different platforms could work together. For sure. And I think all I think of our jobs easier because you know the platforms better than anyone else. Definitely. I'll go ahead and let's see. I'm trying to look for the channel, but yeah, I'm happy to pitch in there. And honestly, like I've told us to Dan and Tina, I don't, yes, I am one of the, I, this is my platform for sure, but ultimately what matters is that each organization finds platforms that work for them. So what's your username on uh, on that Discord? I should just be Meep everywhere. M E E P. Okay. Oh, is it yeah. toolkits so, or frameworks? Is that the correct? I just one? tagged you. It's called Volunteer Coordination Platform. Okay, let me. It's under the uh, co-creation category. I just tagged you, so. Okay, sure. great. I'll be able to find it then. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I, yeah, one of the things that was interesting about. Or go, and I'd be very curious um, uh, your input on that as well. But that that it's an that it's an app and can be white list or uh, white um, uh, white labeled white labeled. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and so, yeah, anyway, but that's one of the aspects that I liked about it. So I'm, I'm very, yeah, I'm curious about integrating how these operate together. And then Bloom Network was also there and they're gonna be having an interesting integration aspect to things. So yeah, whatever overlays we can uh, navigate, your, your skillfulness would be welcome. Sure thing, of course. Apologies for being late. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello there. So I was just stepping them through, I guess all of Celesta actually. <laughs> did you show them the uh, your token, my favorite part of it, the tokenomics? And I did step through a tokenomics part nice. of it, but yeah. <laughs> you probably speak to it actually better as a user. Oh, I just, I, I'm just a fan of seeing like, you know, I feel like I've worked with a few platforms and it's tricky to kind of find a platform that really, you know, breaks down the allocation, the distribution, you know, seeing it all from like one dashboard. I think, I think the, you know, Celesta does a great job at, you know, really kind of adding transparency into the whole structure of your, your tokenomics. Um, so just from a volunteer point of view, I mean, I, I, you know, I love the idea of Kanban boards, Kanban boards. Um, and I think it's very important for a volunteer who say you come into Lala Gardens, is how can I contribute? That you can go to one space in one page and look at all the different things of how to contribute and then just mm -hmm. be able to plug in there without feeling like you need to go to some protocol process first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just curious how a volunteer would, you know, hear about Lala Gardens and it says, oh, if you want to volunteer, go here. And then from there, how does that work? Yeah, and I think it depends a bit on the model that you envision folks, you know, coming into doing work. If it's something like a volunteer finds out about Lala Gardens, is sent to a dashboard or a platform that has all the units of work or just tasks that need to be done. It could be a Kanban board like this, something that they can filter, you know, by different skills that they might have, you know, if it's marketing or technology or branding, art, and so on, gardening. And if that was all listed as, you know, items in this component, they could click into it and understand what's happening there. Um, the other thing that we do have here, which would need some fine tuning a bit with you folks in the room, would be that this view can be customized per category. So if someone wanted to go through and say, hey, I'm really interested in branding or can be ops, we can customize this panel so that people who are, have those skills or who want to contribute in that way can take a look at the ways that they can contribute and help out. That could just be open quests, but it could also be more information um, as you see fit. But for now, the, what this breakdown has is just a summary overview of the, of the working group, the different quests that are available for, what milestones they're working towards, and then a couple of you know important links and announcements and so on. Yes, yeah, so is there is there a way for the uh, general public to go to that Kanban board? The the Kanban board, yeah, we could probably make it public. Um, I guess it would be we can either set a flag to. Yeah, I don't know if everybody would want. Actually, Dan, do you know if Region Garden would want their Kanban board public? I think the way we would probably handle that is having some sort of onboarding just so like, you know, somebody would say, hey, I want to I want access to the Kanban board and we would just say we would just validate them, you know, and almost I would think, you know, um, Neil, do you think there would be a benefit to exposing that to everyone? You know, I mean, you're really kind of you're opening up kind of the entire inner workings of your business. It would almost I just see it as it, it's definitely beneficial to give visibility to the right people but i i don't i would um i i would almost question giving it to everyone almost yep, just so there's a streamlined way to onboard two ways to look at this sure. one can be i only want certain people to look at this and then one is like here's everything that's going on like burning man here's all the stuff that's going on what do you want to contribute to mm -hmm. that just mm. and that's almost like the advertisement of like to advertise a community versus like Here's what we're doing. That's to me and to Burning Man to in the volunteer community, it's not really exciting. But if I said, hey, here are the 20 things going on. Where do you want to contribute? That to me is what today, like when you go to YouTube, you don't go to you know, YouTube and here's the video of the day. It's like you go to YouTube and based on things you like, here are all the choices of different categories and you get to choose. I would love this. I mean, this is the way we're designing. Um, I mean, this is the way they design the cooperatives I work in. Mm -hmm. is the first thing you go to, here's the cooperative page and you can go to the 
a screen where like, here's all the things going on. You can filter by different categories and see where you want to contribute. Interesting. I think then um, maybe what makes sense is having a, maybe, so do they have anything private or is it all public? Well, I'm mean, saying you can have two different ways to do it. One, you can have a private section for, yeah. um, for things that are more private, but then should they should at least be an option for the general public to have. I like that. See what's going I'm on. wondering if the app, like the Orgo app, that's a La La Gardens app, could be that front facing, like here's everything. And then that could lead into, um, into some. Mm -hmm. I think you could do it here. I think, um, I think Sahana, you know, what make, might make sense is almost having a, um, you know, a, an ability to say, is this a private, is this a private task or is this a public task? And then, you know, kind of the owner choosing whether or not they want to privatize or publicize it. And really mm -hmm. the difference is, our, is your address uh, within our kind of community? Then you can see all the privates. Is it not? Then you can only see all the pro the publics. Right. And I guess the question I'm having is actually, would you want it even to be login restricted? Like, would this be something? Just that, the public, I think. Yeah. So in that case, we don't even need their address. So I, I'm sorry, just the private, just the privates you'd want. You'd right. want block, but I think to do work so we can track it, you would actually, you would absolutely want them to like log in. If they're going to actually be a contributor to that piece of work, we need to know how to actually, you know, pay them and mm -hmm. compensate them. Yeah. So right. we would need to know their their wallet address. But I think from a visibility perspective, showing it to everyone, and then if somebody wants to actually get involved, it's like okay, uh, pick this task up with your wallet address. It, it's still public. It's just your wallet kind of allows us to to track you so we can compensate you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, the way I've seen it in Haifa anyway, is that all the rows and quests and positions are all, they're all out there. They're like, and you know, there's like dozens upon dozens of different choices and roles and things you could apply for. Um, and so I don't know of any part of it that's not, that's closed off. Like it's designed to be, I mean, it's designed, as far as I know, a DAO is, is like completely open where, everything's transparent to the community. Mm -hmm. That's actually <clears throat> confusing to me. And the only reason I like having, like for instance, this is just bringing up something. I've got, of course, Gemini, like two different sort of, like I've got the NFT community, then I've got the IRL community. And so if every single thing is transparent right from the get-go, then the NFT community doesn't have, I mean, it's accessed and has its own operations. And then some of those roles, what I'm kind of looking at in design-wise is like, they're, 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 they're specific to each aspect of what's happening, but they're also general. So like there are only ever going to be five roles, but even if you have, let's say a proposal when it, when it, within the NFT community, you're still utilizing those same basic roles, but they're using, but you're using it for your specific community. So it's almost like there's a, there's a, a repetition of pattern, but as you get sort of within the circle that is your project that is being funded through the NFT, for instance, that has a kind of a, a clarity through simplicity. It's not necessarily not accessible or visible, but it's definitely not just out there to confuse everybody because it's a huge ecosystem that we're trying to navigate. So that's my two cents. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't actually used Haifa yet, so I'm you know, I'm not as versed as to what they're doing. Um, I know that what we're trying to build here is to be, you know, I want to try to keep it as simple as possible while adding as much functionality as possible. Neil, did that make sense about sort of like having it be not exclusively funnily, but somewhat just simple uh, for simplicity and organization. So for me, and, and I, you know, I'm really reading what I had said earlier. It's really having two filters. Yeah. One for the people that are overwhelmed and don't want choice, right? They don't, it's like, I just want to be told what to do. And there's a lot, I'd say, there's just half the population works like that. I just want to be told what to do. So they're told what to do. And then there's the how to half is just, I want to see everything that's going on and I want to pick and choose. I want to go to like YouTube and Airbnb and Uber. It's like, I want all the choices and I pick and filter my own choices. Mm -hmm. So just to provide those two options, not to have it's, it's not either or. 
It's providing the two choices. I want to be told what to do, or I want to have all the choices. I mean, it's just a matter of filtering so that I don't, I know when I'm in the NFT community and I know when I'm in the IRL community and I know when I'm interfacing with the other organizations that will be serviced within the ecosystem. So that's the only thing, but yeah, I want to be able to filter and navigate openly, but I also want to know where I am at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. Neil, can you elaborate a little bit on your, <clears throat> on your viewpoint as far as uh, these two different views? Cause it's not necessarily a private public view. It's a it's a more or less view. Does that make okay. sense? I, I didn't quite understand that, but like, so for Haifa, it's basically like any role, like they have um, seven salary bands and they have like um, 30, 40 different roles that are being compensated if approved by the community. Um, so you can look at the 30 or 40 different roles and then apply for them at any time. Um, and I suppose there are quests that you can also apply and create for or, or suggest. And so it's just kind of like this, um, it's kind of like, I mean, like nature, right? It's this completely open thing where you can do whatever you want. And it's just a tool to um, create and do whatever you feel you want to do in it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's, it's like that. And so like, yeah, obviously it's not for everybody. So, but I'm saying for the people who want that, that actually have that option. And for people to say, you know what, I just, maybe I need an agent and I just have an mm. interview with somebody and says, hey, here's what I'm good at. Here's what, how I want to contribute. And the person says, okay, well, I don't just roll for you. Well, apply for this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, there are people, but there, I'm just saying in the, in the W3 world, people are becoming increasingly skilled at, educated, trained in, having a Lego set of pieces and building something that they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, people in, like 20 years ago, people had no idea what to do with that. Today, oh, right. even 10 years ago, even five years ago. Now it's you got, you, you got a Minecraft world where it's <laughs> like, you know, give me the blocks. I want to build whatever I want. I know what I want. Um, <laughs> don't tell me what to do, right? <laughs> but I'm saying that at the same time, there's still the tell me what to do. I'm overwhelmed. But all I'm, all I'm saying is you want to accommodate both crowds, not making an either or. Got you. I think the I got best you. way actually might just be to make the entire dashboard potentially public or not. And uh -huh. as the organize, like the DAO can then decide what style of operation they, they like to fit in there, whether it's something that they want to have that view for everyone to be able to see, you know, everything that's happening versus keeping it kind of closed. I have seen that too, Dan. I think um, the number of folks we've spoken to have been like, yeah, we don't want all of our business secrets up in the open because we still are unfortunately in a competitive you know, world, but there's no need for everyone to have to adhere to that. It can just be an option that you can check off if you want it to be public for all versus not. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think, uh, and I'll just throw this out there that I don't have as much experience with the DAO as, as I do kind of the development space. So you know, and, but I totally understand like, you know, the, the whole premise behind a DAO is that it's decentralized autonomous organization. Everybody should, you know, be able to pick up the tasks that are there and be able to work on them and do it. So I, I, I totally resonate with the, with the why, you know, I'm, I'm just almost more exploring, exploring it with you. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, yeah, the open source, yes, but I am completely confused by the amount of rules in Haifa and I can't personally function there. So just and, to find some, yeah. I'm like wanting to, at least filters to be able to navigate and map according to flipping color codes or something, you know, like something yeah. that makes it simple for someone like me too. And I think the, the whole idea that we were going with was almost not trying to assign or establish roles or responsibilities, but really you know, like we're as an organization or as a decentralized organization going to rate, uh, you know, how much these tasks are worth to us. And then when somebody completes them, they say, I completed this. And then we compensate them with um, the amount of to tokens proportionately, you know, proportionate to the amount of work that was done in that month. You know, we'll have a whole bunch of work that's done in that month. The idea is that people will accumulate a certain amount of points given the amount of tasks they execute we already have established how much tokens we're gonna to be releasing on a monthly basis. So really it's just, uh, and to what departments. So really it's just who did the amount of work and let's say marketing department 
uh, and then we're basically saying, let's just say a million tokens for sake of ease. You know, there was 10 people that did, you know, varying levels of work and we distribute those million tokens proportionately to every single one. So we're not actually, you know, the, the distribution model is set up in a way in which uh, it slow drips all these tokens into the economy rather than us kind of like defining, you know, this thing is worth this many tokens because we don't, we don't know the value of the token. You know, we, we just know that the, the, the work is worth, you know, compared to other work, this work is like a four on a scale of four to 10 or a six on a scale of six to 10. And then at the end of the month, we're compensating everybody that did work, you know, and we're giving away a fixed amount of tokens proportionally to uh, the people that did that work. So we can kind of like, the idea behind that was to rip out hourly, to rip out roles, to rip out like kind of these other things that hold up and like kind of confuse the whole model. It's really, we're going to give away a million tokens to marketing. Uh, if 10 people do, you know, the same amount of work proportionally across the board, then every single person gets 100,000 tokens. It's just a, it's a fixed model. We, we are distributing these tokens over a fixed amount of time. And then basically setting up a system in which we can reward back uh, once these tokens are in the economy and, and moving. It's a slightly different way of, of compensation. And it kind of does address the sort of like the aspect you were looking for, Neil, um, as far as like um, a currency that kind of degrades over time, because if we're doing it where it's equal distribution among the work being done at any given time, then it's kind of like when the work is done, the work is done. And it's like, then that value translates differently with each period somehow. Like, I like, I like it. I just see it as a more, I don't know. I see it as an equal distribution in a very interesting way. What do you think? It just, it, the idea was to, to strip away a bit of management as well, you know, like where we're not kind of like, well, what do we think the token's worth? We want to, you know, then let's make this thing, you know, to 10,000 tokens, but yet, you know, we've made all these other things, 10,000 tokens. And now we've, our, now all of a sudden we've distributed 2 million tokens in a month in which we only wanted to distribute a million. And now we're, now we're not actually following our financial model or our tokenized model where distributing more and we're actually upsetting the long-term economy of, you know, the tokenization that we laid out. That was kind of, we wanted to have a settled system in which it's very definable. That's why when you go through that distribution tab and you see it over time, it's so impactful because it's like, this is exactly what's being released uh, in a fixed amount of time. And I mean, you can see when it drops off and then the idea is that, you know, that whole big treasury is basically the rewards back into the system. So like there is a major part of the system that is, uh, you know, developed in a way in which it's meant to reward uh, you know, the people that contribute and are a part of the ecosystem. I'll just say that's Letty's, who's not on this call expertise. My role is really kind of like, um, how do we get, you know, my, like the people I work with are the Burning Man organization. How do you get people to co-create together? How do you get them to motivate it to work together? Mm -hmm. um, and what's going on? What are they used to? Right? But as far as like, how does the compensation system work that gets into you know the the that gets into like economics yeah. um and 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 it's just more of a compensation system and what's fair and what's going to actually and so that's a whole level of um science and math that letty handles mm -hmm. so it's, it's important for me to let her handle that part of it um and not feel like i'm not you know put my two cents in an area where it's just really not my not my area of study Mm -hmm. Neil, you did mention earlier in the call about deflationary token, like just having tokens value be decreasing over time. Yeah. Do you have a sense for what, I mean, what the design principles behind that were and how that's going yeah. to work? Yeah, so that, and there's, um, so there's a, there's a good channel on that. And then, so one of our, this so region living DHO is the DHO, which is basically a more a governance system added to a DAO. Mm -hmm. So that's what DHO is in the C's ecosystem. So ours is the Regenerative Living DHO. And one of our partners in it is the Regenerative Living Institute. It's a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And it, it exists because nobody is there telling anyone what is and isn't regenerative. So everyone's kind of more or less making up their own definitions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of these projects, are, and then Tina knows, a lot of these projects in the Regenerative Living 
even the region and Discord aren't even regenerative, aren't even close to being regenerative. Mm -hmm. But no one's telling them they're not. So we have we work with a group that defines what is regenerative, and they define what is a regenerative currency. Mm -hmm. And a regenerative currency is something that encourages flow and discourages hoarding and stagnation. And it, it doesn't require currency to decay, but it says it is one of by far the most effective tools to actually encourage flow. Because if you, if you, it's like plastic, if you own a thousand pieces and they never expire, there is almost no incentive whatsoever to spend it. Um, it's like you save it. And it's kind of like a chipmunk collecting all these acorns and like, I'm going to, I, I find all this huge cache of acorns. I'm going to store it all. If I have a storage space, I'm going to store it. Why would I share the, any of these? I'm going to put them all. I don't need maybe it's for 20 lifetimes, but I'm going to save it for this, my squirrel families for the next 20 generations. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens, but they acorns decay. So they can't do that. Mm. Um, they only store a year supply. So therefore there are acorns for everybody. But in this world, obviously with the income gap, people hoard money. And so of course there's not Jeff Bezos with eight, whatever, 180 billion. And you got all these poor people um, because of, because uh, this money doesn't decay. And so if you put that into it, it would, in, in, solve a lot of those problems. Even in fiat, there's a decay when you die at 50%, the 50% estate tax. Mm -hmm. Regenerative currency doesn't even have that. So it's even more, it's even less regenerative than even fiat money, which is supposed to be, you know, a, an improvement on. So we want to, we're looking for ways to put that into the system. And also it's very important, which is why you, what you all are doing important is also the other way to create flow is that to localize currency. So we want to encourage as much local um, currency development as possible because when it's localized, people tend to um, mm -hmm. be more attached and committed to supporting local efforts because they can actually see that versus a corporation that's you know just taking money from other places and just storing it away in another place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the explanation. That makes sense. I guess there's the explicit decaying that you can do on the token. Um, can look into that. And there's also the knob of releasing more tokens each season over time. So as the circulating supply increases, the value of your tokens decreases. Um, there's another option there for that. Oh, yeah. I mean, like that's tokenomics, right? So, mm -hmm. like, um, how do you stop inflation by just producing more of it? And the way that this is what seeds had designed. They had designed whenever the price goes up and you generate more through grants for regenerative projects. Um, and then they hit a point where like um, the, the money wasn't circulating or they weren't getting any fiat funding for their work. So they kind of like more or less threw a lot of it out the window and just said, oh, let's just go back to the speculative model where or the value <laughs> can't have inflation because then investors will be willing to buy seeds. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, they started off with the, having these holistic principles, but like over time, it's like, uh, you know, the uh, people aren't conditioned in this regenerative world yet. They're still conditioned in the fiat world. So let's just go back to having inflation as a way to encourage people to buy seeds with fiat. And it, yeah, and I, I love the, the, the slow drip and the fact that you can kind of control that over time based on feedback loops. So that is kind of one of my favorite parts about this um, the ability to slide that scale the mm -hmm. method is pretty elegant in my view, but I'm also not a tokenomics, <laughs> but I'm really attracted to that. Yeah, I'm not, the last thing I'll add is it's like just like Wikipedia. Think of Wikipedia as like, you don't say like, wow, Wikipedia is really hard to navigate. Right, you just say Wiki has everything I need. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all I'm talking about. It's like, say, if I'm gonna to contribute to a project and I wanna focus on specifically on this one thing, like, you know, maybe there's a, I'm focused on uh, Native American indigenous practices for growing soybeans. Mm -hmm. And I just do that and bam, there's three programs that are for that. That's what I'm looking for. And I wanna to contribute to two of those programs now that I know they exist. Mm -hmm. uh, versus like, I'm gonna to go to this project and. I look at three options of like because that's where I, you know people are directing me and I, I didn't notice number option 433 was what I really wanted <laughs> yeah 
yeah well it's a way more complex than you know simplifying things for volunteers like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely a spectrum there i think there is parts that we can automate for sure and make it streamlined and super simple for someone to hop on board and be able to find exactly where they're going but the more fine-grained and the more specialized this person wants to be i wonder if it's if having that human that you mentioned kind of an agent model or you have someone onboarding somebody with an opening interview or of something of that sort to understand, you know, I got just the place for you. You should look into these specific people, these specific, you know, tasks and see if they resonate with you. Um, I wonder if getting that human aspect out of the loop. Is yeah, I mean, it's for the people who are like, don't want to go on YouTube and search for videos that you're looking for, right? Yep. It's like, I don't even want to go on YouTube, but it's overwhelming. Okay, so then, Hey, what are you looking for? I want I, I like sewing and I'm looking for this. Okay, so then the person goes and does the search, does the same thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that a more technically inclined user would do, but just does it for them. Right. But that's it's the same tool. You just need someone to help them with the tool. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. What the hell? Um feel like we're coming to a natural pause. Are there, are there any other questions um, to wrap up? And then we can get this posted and get feedback from other folks. But yeah. Neil, do you have any other questions? Or Dan, do you have any other insights? Or Sahana? I would strongly encourage like uh, you all to participate in the Regen Civics channel on volunteer coordination platforms. And then just have a, a really robust discussion with the other volunteer coordination platforms and see how we can all work together cooperatively mm -hmm. where versus like five platforms all you know sharing their own siloed story which makes it really difficult for us to figure out how to work together and what <clears throat> what would your recommendation be there now so there's a the region civics discord where the 13 pilot projects are all using as a you know communications platform but as and far I, as how we how we kind of like you know how, how you know your recommendation as far as how to even collaborate like the back end DAOs, you know like there are you know i think it, inevitably you know there's going to be other you know there's going to be platforms in which you use other DAOs and kind of yeah. you know like do have kind of a vision there as far as how to you know you know manage kind of the 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 aspect of multiple DAOs, or do you think it's just really kind of be getting in there and coordinating and making sure that we're kind of all cross compatible. Well, it will be, yeah, it will be, well, what will be ideal, which will probably quit eventually is like, in fact, competitors do this. They put a table, right? They put all the, their five competitors or, or people in the field that people get confused with competitors, for instance, and list them all. And then you put a table of what it does and what it doesn't do. So people can almost instantly see, um, that, oh my God, these are not even the same thing. I thought they were the exact same thing. Or, you know, so just, I mean, someone's going to do that if it's not me in the next two weeks, but like, <laughs> but it's nice that if platform, but yeah, platform creators often create these charts. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. Totally, totally, 100%. And it, like yeah. a, like almost like a features uh, chart yeah. where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, this feature and then, and then these three have it, these two don't. You know, here's a, a, another feature, these two have it, this one doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And then people in the community can say, well, I want this feature, which none of them have. And maybe right. one of them can say, well, I can put that in to and, you know, totally easy. I didn't realize that was a needed feature. Right. So that I like, being I like what you're saying. Tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would be awesome, Neil, since it sounds like you have quite a bit of experience with this. Can you, you know, if you could even lay out what those features are, like, I would be happy to kind of help you try to, uh, you know, establish some sort of public way to visualize that so long as you know like i knew the feet like i just i'm not super you know I, you would probably have a better idea of like the yeah. the, the overall feature set and then uh yeah. you know we could even help kind of provide the insight as far as what does what you know what i mean yeah. well i'm gonna start i can do this i can start a, a, a like a simple list like decaying coin or open platform for everyone to see all quest or you know just that this is a feature set that we're that anyway the cooperatives i work with are looking for yeah. and then i'll ask hey letty one, which ones would you add and then and then other people can add theirs and then from there we can create a table you know it sounds great i think understanding yeah i like that 
understanding what the specs are are super important in this space. Like we can totally come up with a chart, but it would be completely meaningless if it doesn't have the features yeah. that you're interested in. Like, yeah, we'll start there. We'll start with a collaborative featured list of what do all the DAO, what do all the 13 projects need as far as on a volunteer coordination platform? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. what's the term? Is it volunteer coordination platform or is it something else? <laughs> Fair enough. Though I, I'm not sure. I don't see where I was tagged on the volunteer. Is it Region Civics Alliance or is it a different Discord? Yeah, it's the Region Civics Alliance Discord. Um, do um, you know if I might have the right permissions for it, um, the right roles? That would be horrible if you don't. That way, I don't. <laughs> no way. Um, so, like, uh, can you? Are you there now? I mean, I can just like takes ten seconds if you you're there. Yeah, now. I'm. I'm on the Discord right now. I'm trying to see where I was tagged, and I don't see me being. Well, you got it. You see community, and then season one flow streams, and season one thirteen projects, and then I see season one thirteen. Yes, I see that community co creation. I don't. Let's look for co-creation. Yes, I see co-creation. Right right yeah, and then this is sixth. Uh, it's the sixth channel volunteer coordination. There we go. Got it. Okay. Do you see you. yourself tagged. I do see myself tagged. Yes. Okay. And so maybe I don't know why you didn't get notified for that. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Oh, you know what? I think what it is. I think I went back in and added you. Oh, okay. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's. I did not though. I didn't know that. <laughs> that this one didn't do that. I didn't realize it doesn't tag you if you if I add you later. It might just be a bug that they'll fix on their own time. Yeah. Well, I think it's a missing feature, honestly. But but <laughs> I, I was wondering about that, but now it's confirmed. <laughs> I have to repost the whole great. message if I tag you. Okay. Great. Got it. Awesome. All right. Work is being done as we speak. <laughs> and are you a bunch of thanks for coming in late i'm going to be having this posted um i've got it i'll talk to neil about where to post all these um meetings and and yeah um, th thank you thank you uh everybody for coming together and talking about this awesome platform great i would encourage you just, just as a quick note uh under alliances i would encourage you to be an alliance and be a Alesta mm -hmm. alliance there's a section called alliances and got it i just there's a at the very start here channel you can apply to be an alliance mm -hmm. it's a formality you apply yourself as an alliance and then you get your own channel and you can basically update everyone on what you're doing sounds great all right i'll look for oh, yes your alliance i see that mm -hmm. all right yeah and then at the start here channel at the very top it's like fill out an alliance member form here mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Sounds great. Thanks everyone for making it out here. And if there's any more questions or anything of that sort, I think everyone here knows where to find me also. Yes. And I will make sure this is available to everyone. So yeah. Thanks all. All right. Thank you everyone. Great. Bye. All right. See you. See you.